Did you go anywhere different from here? Um, yeah, I went to um, uh, Turks and Caicos. Um, got a little beach action. Castaway. That's how I was. That's who I was. Tom Hanks. You know who that is. I wanted to ask uh, if, if, like, a rookie said, hey, I'm going to my first all star break, what should I, how's that approach it? That's what you would recommend? Well, I mean, usually every rookie, I know I did it. I, I know everyone, every rookie does it. Is uh, they go to Miami for All Star break, so uh, I'm sure that's what most rookies in the NBA have done. But um, I mean, you got to enjoy your time. Um, you definitely want to get rest, but you know, you got to enjoy yourself, enjoy your life too. So. When uh, Chris asked uh, or Wayne asked about the um yeah for sure um you know obviously he's he's a a great shooter a uh, hell of a shooter for his size um you know he, he's got great touch and uh you know obviously for me I, I shoot as well but um it's definitely you got you have to have a balance um you know you want to score points in the paint because you know for our team and, and who we've been over the past 58 games um, or whatever it is, um, you know, we've we've been top in the league in points for paint per game. So, um, yeah, definitely a little bounce. Mark on Twitter that you're really fired up these final 24 games. So, for final 24 games for you, or what is it that excites you about the end of this? Uh, playoff push. Um, I mean, that's that's the goal. I mean, I've been in the playoffs my past two seasons. So, you know, anytime, you know, you, you get past the all-star break, you, you know, you get jitters and it, it's, it's a fun time because uh, you have an opportunity to uh, continue playing. You know, it's it's a downhill uh, to, uh, to the finish line, you know, 24 games, in 46 nights. It goes really quick. You know, I think we have like six back to backs and we have, um, you know, a game damn near every every night, every other night. So um, what's not to be excited about? Uh, just it just helps the cohesiveness of the unit, um, and also you know you, you have something to fall back on. You know I think that you know if if you understand and know your spots, if you think about a, a, a ball player like Chris Paul, he uh, he he knows his spots on the court. You know when in doubt, you know he's trying to get to the right elbow um, to shoot his shot, and um, you know that's something that he's probably done many many times, and he's very very confident in and. He knows that anything's on the court. I don't know what to do. Shot class one and I can get to that spot, you know, and then vice versa for your teammates, you know. Um, you know, you know where your teammates like the ball, you know where they're confident shooting and where they're gonna be most efficient. So I've talked to some young players who said that they're amazed with the team in the NBA that are they didn't have to see the basket to score. Is that like a goal that like yeah, I mean, you got to have a feel for it. I mean, I'm not there yet. You know, I want to be, um, you know, I feel like sometimes I may hit tough shots, but, you know, if you think about guys like DeMar DeRozan, you know, he does it every single night. He does it, um, you know, hand in his face, three pump fakes, like, you know, that's, that's a great player. So, um, yeah, for sure. Who's been the biggest influence you think uh, as far as teaching you the importance of being an invested team? As far as like you're taking, say, really you know, getting on the team you're playing or calling up tape for your sense of joining the team, just being an invested team. Um, I mean, this goes back to college. Um, you know, I, I had a teammate in college, uh, you know, his name was Brandon Taylor. And he was, um, you know, someone that was 
the most enthusiastic investor teammate I've ever been around. You know, someone that was on the court, off the court. Um, you know, let's hang out. You know, let's get in the gym. Let's, you know, communicate on the court. Let's, you know, rah, rah, rah. Like, being invested, an uh, invested teammate is, you know, it means you care. Like, you're passionate about the sport. You love the game. Like, you love, um, you know, everything that you're doing. So, uh, for me, I feel like that just comes, you know, from college, but also just naturally because I love the game and I love to, um, you know, help others and have fun. And, you know, this is, you know, what I've done my whole life. So, you feel like you took on a bigger leadership role in the team, changing a little bit and now I have to have some of the game? Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say a, a bigger leadership role. I just feel like, you know, just your attention to detail and um, sense of focus just goes up, you know after all-star break, super, super important. Um, you know, it's the end of the season, you know, and, and it's all about what you want. Like, do you want to um, end April 10th or do you want to continue to play? So, um, you know, for me, I'm just very, very excited. You know, it's one of the best times of the year is when basketball picks up, you know, every every single game matters. You know, when you go home, watch TV, it's always going to be a great game because everybody's playing with passion. and. Um, you know, that's what makes this sport so beautiful. Are you hammering home that message to guys like them and you that sense of urgency you can establish? No, it's not about a Denny Ruri thing. It's a, a Washington Wizards thing, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, obviously every individual matters, but, you know, it, it's about the team. It's about, um, you know, everyone on this ball club, everyone in the organization rallying to a common goal. And, um, you know, that's what everybody wants to do here. Everybody wants to continue to keep playing and um, continue to de develop. You know, after the trade deadline, we've, uh, you know, we've been a different team. You know, we've, you know, dropped a game or two, but, you know, to be three and two and, you know, we understand where we're going and, um, you know, we know what direction we want to, you know, continue playing in. So. Hey, that's about Um, I didn't watch anything. Um, you know, when I'm on break, I don't tune into nothing. Um, TV, I was on the beach. And um, so, yeah, I, I, like, I, I, I seen the, re the highlights at the end, like today, but that's about it. Yeah, I need a mental flush. I watch so much basketball, so. Um, you know, it's weird to honestly to like be a mentor because like I'm still like I'm only in my fifth year in the NBA. Like I'm not even a vet. Like to me, a vet is someone that's you know eight, eight to ten years. You know what I mean? But um, you know, because that's what I'm used to, and. Um, but at the same time, you know, I believe that I'm a knowledgeable person and, um, you know, people see that. So, uh, you know, the little that I know, you know, I just try to help. And, uh, you know, Denny or anybody else, like, you know, they love the game too. They have a big passion. And when you, when you share that type of interest and you see people that are like you, uh, you know, you naturally connect because, um, you know, we love the game. So. Quite a cool moment where who TV, TV, okay, yeah, yeah, TV, okay, TV, okay, okay. uh huh. Uh, quite a cool moment where I think in a prior season you were Curry Corey, take over the side, mm -hmm. and maybe you catch up early in him. Then a couple moments later, you take the same shot, and then he gave the high five. So No, I mean, that's just me. Um, I, I'm a very optimistic person. Um, and I, I try not to think so negative. You know, it, it's so much negativity in the world. You see it on social media. You see it, you know, in everyday life. So, you know, for me, um, just being positive, you know, that's that's contagious, I, I believe. Um, happiness is contagious. You know, playing with joy and, 
you know, if, if you can uplift a teammate and make a teammate feel better about themselves, then you're going to have a better chance to win ball games and everyone's going to care. So, um, I mean, that's, that's all it's about, really. So. What is what is a practice like the first the first one back to the Uh hell. Yeah. It's um we just play up and down. We just play. Nobody has lungs. You know, I know I didn't touch the basketball and I'm, I'm sure most other guys didn't, but um, you know, it's a, it's always important. It's always a fun, it's always a fun practice because you know you're gonna play a lot. You know, we have referees and getting after it. You got Pope yelling at the refs like he always does. And um, you know, it's just a fun environment. Everybody, everyone's having fun and getting after it and just blowing their lungs out. So um no, I don't think so. I think it one is necessary, but then also um when you think about what you just said, having a back to back coming up, um, you know, it, it definitely prepares you. And um, you know, having back to back after All Star, I've never had that, but it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> All right, Kuz, let's take a couple of questions from Zoom. We'll start with Kareem. Hey, what up, Kuz? What up? I hadn't, I hadn't thought about Brandon in a while. That was my guy back in the day. Uh-huh, right. He was good dude. Uh, got two parter for you. Um, from not first half, but pre All Star break. I'm curious, was there something as a group that you guys did that you really liked as a team that you're like, hey, we got to keep doing this um, for this back stretch? And on the flip side of that, is there something that you didn't like you guys did as a collective that said, okay, we have to clean this up for this back stretch? Um, you know, I, that's a tough question. Um, you know, I just think that, like you talk about pre All Star. Um, which I'm guessing that's what post deadline or all in all. What do you mean? Um, it's just kind of all in all because I do I do know the kind of dynamic of the team did change after the trade deadline, and there was only a couple games there. So I know that's kind of, that's a little bit different, but just kind of overall, um, not necessarily just post trade. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, if you look at our season, it's been a roller coaster. Um, you know, pretty deep roller coaster, but you know, um, you know, starting out ten and three, you know, I think that, um, you know, we might have got ahead of ourselves a little bit, you know, in, in the first group that we had here. Um, you know, we were rolling, and you know, it felt really, really good. Obviously, uh, had a lot of buzz, and then, um, you know, we just took our foot off the gas a little bit. And I think our record kind of really reflects that. And, you know, we went through some things, we went through some injuries, some uh, went through COVID, you know, just like anybody else in the NBA, everybody's dealt with that. But, um, you know, once, once it kind of went left, it was hard to get back right. And obviously needed some changes and, um, you know, you know, for us, after that, after the deadline, you know, we just, you know, this is all we got. You know, we we know the cards that we've been dealt. Um, you know, not sure when KP is going to play. Obviously, Brad's out the rest of the year. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, you, you can't let it matter. You know, you have to understand that, um, you know, we have enough. You know, we still have. 15 players here and everybody can contribute and everybody um, has the ability and uh, capability to um, play well consistently. And, you know, that's what we have to show. So, you know, I believe that we can do it and I believe, you know, why not us, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, that's kind of our mindset. Cool. Cool. I appreciate you. Yeah. We'll go over to Chris Miller. What up, though? Yo. While you were on your castaway vibes, I'm curious from a mental standpoint, did you detach from the game or were you kind of in self-reflection mode of the first 58? Um, so a little bit of both. Um, 
you know, you, you always want to detach yourself. And I think that's very, very important, not only for basketball and what we do. Obviously, we have a high pressure job. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think it's always important to detach to something you love, um, you know, so you can find that balance. And, you know, when you can come back to it, you're, you're full of joy. Like today, I was, I couldn't wait to get to the gym. Obviously, I was on the sand somewhere, but I couldn't wait to get back to the team and, um, you know, just be around guys, you know, because obviously that's what you love to do. But at the same time, um, you definitely want to self-reflect and, um, you know, just understand your mission and understand, um, you know, what have you done? You know, what could you've done? How can you improve? And, um, you know, I, I think that's very, very vital to, uh, you know, everything, everything that you do in life. Uh, Self-reflection is huge. Um, just one follow-up. This might be hard for you to answer kind of like in real time as the season is going on, but Kyle, how would you kind of describe the growth of your leadership? Um, I think, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, it was a little different because, um, you know, obviously, you know, having Brad, uh, having a lot of vets here, you know, it was more of a, you know, we were kind of more of a collective, you know what I mean? Um, you know, everybody would chime in. And obviously with a lot of vets gone, uh, Brad gone, um, you know, we have a lot of young guys, a lot of, um, you know, quiet guys, not necessarily quiet, but, um, you know, I, I just feel like uh, for me, you know, I, I just want to spread my joy for the game. I want to um, encourage guys, you know, I, I want to win. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. So um, somebody's got to do it. And, um, you know, I've always been that way my whole life. So you know, why not? Appreciate it, man. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. We will finish up with Neil. Hey, Kuz. Glad that uh, you had a relaxing time on the beach. Um, I'm curious for you, you know, obviously you've had a bigger role than, you know, last couple seasons to start this season. But now, you know, you're kind of propelled into the 1A, 1B role with KP. Is there anything that you talk to Brad about, about, hey, you know, if I'm trying to get out of this double team, you know, what am I trying to do here or here or anything like that? Um, not really, you know, I don't really look at all the 1A, 1B, you know, just play basketball. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, uh, earlier in my career when I was, uh, when I was a Laker, um, you know, my third year, I got so, so caught up of, you know, trying to be like, you know, part of a big three and do this and do that. Like, you know, you, you read what the media says and, um, you know, media ask you, you know, can you be a part of this or whatever? But I mean, none of that stuff really matters. You know, at the end of the day, you just got to go out. You got to play hard. Um, you got to play like you're never going to play again. You know, so, um, you know, I kind of, you know, leave that stuff out of it because it, it just complicates the game. So, you know, for me, I want to come in. Obviously, I know I have a big role. I know that, um, you know, I'm one of the main playmakers right now, and uh, it's up to me to, you know, make others better and, um, you know, just just help lead. So, you know, I'm excited for it. And going into the break, you talked about, like, you know, it's refreshing to get back to playing for each other, things like that for the next man. How have you, I, I know it's early, but how have you assessed that that's maybe continued on through the break now? I mean, that's mandatory. I mean, everybody has to do it. You know, it's if you want to play winning basketball, that's that's how it's got to be. You know, it's not, you know, my turn, take a shot or I got a mismatch. I got to go like, no, let's play basketball, you know, make the right play. Um, cheer on your teammate when you're on the bench. Um, be happy for the next man and let's just go try to win some games. How was practice? It was good. A very spirited practice. Um, you know, it's one of those things where after 
all-star break. The guys have had you know five or six days off. You just got to get them moving, you know, get them up and down. And then best part of just being competitive, I think that's the you know, just shake the dust off a little bit, but get them up and down as much as we can. Um, they all want to get out and compete. So good energy in the gym, uh, good vibe. And I think we uh, were able to accomplish that. No, he wasn't. Um, you know, he, you know, after the break, we, we were concerned about just throwing him out there. So, so still kind of ramping things up for him. Um, he looked good in, in what he did, the 1v1 type stuff. Um, so I think we'll, we'll reevaluate re where he is tomorrow and, and then go from there. But uh, it was a good sign to see him do a little bit more today. I don't want to jump to that conclusion, but you know, I think it's it's still uh, day to day right now. We, we we go back and forth on that. Um, I don't want to you know peg him one way or the other. I think he he can play both positions. He's had success at both positions. Um, I think um, you know from an offense perspective, his ability to stretch the floor, uh, you know, play off the bounce a little bit, post up. Um, gives you the versatility to, to just put him out there. And in small ball game, it's easy to say he's the five. You can cross match a lot, you know, I think defensively. But, um, you know, I, I don't want to put him necessarily in a box and say he's going to be our five, he's going to be our four. Uh, once we get him cleared to, you know, full contact and get him back in the fold, um, I think that'll, that'll shake itself out. Oh, I think it, there is a balance to that. I mean, I think it's the quality of threes that's most important. Um, I think overall, we'd like to see the numbers um, go up, but it's the right type of threes. I think both guys can do can do that, whether it's pick and pop, um, you know, post to play make. I think those, those are options as well. Um, we can use them as facilitators in the pocket and pick and rolls, uh, but I don't think it's one of those things where we're just going to, be five out spacing, you know, all game uh, and take contested pull-ups. I, I think that's the thing. The way the ball has moved lately, we've seen an uptick in our overall efficiency, but I'd like to continue that trend um, and find the right types of shots. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think at times it's it, it'll be good for us. I think downsizing with him at the five is good for us. So I think it gives us a lot of flexibility. I'm not going to commit one way or the other right now, but um, I think it, it, to have that dynamic is unique. It's a u unique pairing, uh, but we've seen it work. Against coaches, yes. After the Nets game, you mentioned you really gained the trust of the players and coaching staff as well. Um, is that kind of this final step of this really coach? I think, um, you know, I personally, I'm beyond that. I think it's a, you know, it's a good sign for him. Um, we went with that group late in the game and, you know, we stayed with that group. So it just shows a lot of trust, um, you know, and not only in him, but also the collective that was out there. Uh, he did a lot of good things in that fourth quarter, uh, big shots, big plays. Uh, so I think it's a good sign, but uh, I think he's been well past that threshold for me uh, for a while. Making those threes, how does that benefit the team? Well, once again, it changes the dynamic. He's not just a mid-range or an ISO guy. He can stretch the floor, whether it's pick and pop or space to the corners. Um, it just gives us a little bit more space. Guys can, uh, you know, play off the bounce, and he can be a facilitator in that regard, or he can also be the recipient. Uh, so it, it does help open the floor up quite a bit. Not, not five on five. We're just trying to build him up. 1v1, 3-on-3, three three, just the normal reintegration we've done with all of our guys when they've been out for, you know, this amount of time. Yeah, no, it's, it's something we have to continue to, to look at and evaluate. It's not just 
what's good for the player. It's, it's what's good for the group. How can we find those spots for each individual? Um, so you're mindful of, of what direction guys like to turn, you know, when they are coming off the pin downs with post ups, which block do they prefer? Um, obviously, you know what, you know, dominant hand they want to play off of. All those things are, uh, they kind of go into that whole picture when you're developing not only your overall structure, but, you know, targeted offense for each individual. It was good. Uh, we could all say it wasn't long enough, but uh, I didn't do anything, you know, go anywhere, just kind of tooled around with the family. And it was just nice to be home, be present, and just, you know, really low key. Uh, well, you know, this is a, you know, small break. I think everyone looks forward to a, you know, a restful few days, but you're always kind of looking at something, uh, you know, watching edits, film, uh, preparing for the, you know, the games that are coming, uh, you know, obviously reintegrating a new component. You have to kind of look at some things there. So there's always something to do. You just want to kind of bide your time and, and portion it out so you, you still can kind of relax, recharge, and, and take a mental break as well. All the players? Yeah, all, all the players. Yes, everybody, everybody was present. Yeah. All right, Coach, let's take some questions from Zoom. We'll start with Chris Miller. Hey, Wes, the way that Rui kind of closed out the game in Brooklyn, especially in the fourth quarter, could you see some carryover maybe today and maybe even going into San Antonio? Just the kind of joy that he kind of played with closing out that game. Yo, it was a good sign to see. And I think that was, uh, you know, part of the messaging for him. You know, it's, I think he's eclipsed, you know, the hurdles that we've kind of had to endure. He's in a good place um, and he's been productive for us. Um, you know, the, toward the end of that game, you know, I liked keeping him, you know, in his matchup against Lamarcus Le Aldridge. Uh, with the size we had on the floor allowed us to switch defensively. Um, but then putting him in pick and rolls, you know, and he, he picked and popped, shot a three, got to the rim, he rolled. Uh, that was a pivotal play for us. Um, you know, that dynamic was good. So I think the more he can do that, be a part of it, it not only helps his, his development, his growth, but, um, you know, the other guys on the floor, they, they're pulling for him just as much as, uh, as he pulls for them. So I think it's great. Do you see another ramp up for him in these final 24, i.e., more minutes, lineup change, another position. Do you just see maybe another another evolution for him? This well, this I think season? we'll use these twenty four games. Um, you know, we have the ability to toy with some things with putting KP in the in the lineup. Um, but I think once again, the the flow of the game tells us a lot. You know, he hasn't played a lot of five, uh, a lot of center, and using him late game as our center. You know, it was. It was great. That's what I thought helped uh, win us the game. So I think there's a different dynamic. And obviously integrating KP is going to add to that. So it gives us a lot of flexibility. It's, uh, you know, exciting to have, you know, another guy that you kind of move around, and whether he's playing the four, the five. Uh, we've done so with Kuz. Uh, so I think it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic. It's unique. Uh, so it's just another thing that we can say we can go to if needed. We'll go over to Kareem. Hey, Wes, welcome back. There was, um, you just said real quick, you know, you, um, you know, the message for Rui, but was there a overall message to the group for this last final stretch? Well, I mean, the messaging is, to, you know, look at what's coming down the road. We have 24 games, I think, in a 46 day window. So there's a huge progression or a huge compression, rather, of games um, with six back to backs, you know, so 12 of those games are going to be back to back games. Um, you know, that's, that's quite dense. When you think about leading up to the break, we had seven back-to-backs on the season. So the game is going to come fast and furious. We, we can't afford once again to try to ease our way into this. We have to come out of the break, you know, with the feet on the ground and hopefully with a little bit of momentum. That win in Brooklyn hopefully gives us a little momentum, but um, it's going to be challenging. There's some very, you know, tough, very tough opponents within that stretch. So we're going to try and uh, do the best we can to get off at the right, the right foot and, you know, keep that momentum. 
I know there was uh, I know the roster obviously looks much different um, post trade than before, but I'm curious. Was there any facet or anything that you guys were doing overall as a group pre All Star that you're like, yes, I, we need to continue doing this. I really like this. Let's make sure we keep on top of this going forward. And on the flip side, is there something from the first? You know, I don't want to say half because obviously it's more than half, but pre All Star that you're like, okay, we have to clean this up if we're going to make this final push. All right, two things. I mean, the ball movement. You know, guys are playing for each other. I think that's important. Um, you know, I think that we have to continue with that spirit. But, you know, on the flip side, we have to do a better job defensively. I think in the last few games, we've seen some of that. But once again, we have to be consistent in that area. I think if we're really serious, you know, with the remaining 24 games, that has to be part of our identity. You know, we've talked about it all season. Uh, we have to get back to doing it and not just doing it for a quarter or doing it for a half. You know, trying to do it for the most part of 48 minutes is, is, as best we can. Perfect. Appreciate you. We'll go to Neil. Hey, Coach. I know you don't like to, you know, put a calendar on anything, but given that KP still has to go through three-on-three -three contact and five-on-five -five contact, is it fair to say it's unlikely that he plays in this upcoming back-to-back, -back, or is there still a chance? I uh, don't necessarily want to close the door on it. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd say right now he's probably day-to-day, -day. Um, but – you know, had a workout today, had two workouts today, actually, and we'll see how he responds tomorrow. Uh, we'll hopefully have a little bit more information on where he stands and how he feels. But, um, you know, I can always hope, but I want to make sure that, you know, he's exactly where he needs to be when we integrate, reintegrate him into the five on five. And when you say 1v1 co uh, with coaches, with contact, is that still different than 1v1 against an NBA player? So to some degree, but it, I think it checks the box in that regard. Um, you know, it's part of the ramp up we've used with a number of players. Um, and then, you know, if we can get three on three and then obviously five on five would be where he's, you know, in full practice uh, with contact. So uh, it's just another step. You know, it's, it's more than he did before. And, you know, every day we're trying, you know, get to another threshold. And then for Brad, I'm curious, just how much is he still around the team? Is he going to also, you know, travel with you guys on different things? And what benefit does that add? Oh, yeah, he, he was here today, you know, as far as practice, doing some rehab. Um, it's, it's always good to have him in the building. You know, I think it's his presence is, is one thing, but have his voice as well. Uh, he'll travel at times. I, I don't, I don't want to commit and say he's going to be on every road trip, but, you know, I think it's important for him to be around as much as possible. It's good for the group. Um, it helps him, you know, once again, kind of keep guys together. Um, you know, it's it's also great for morale, you know, to see your your leader, your best player involved, invested in what we're doing. Uh, that's meaningful. Thanks, Coach. Welcome back. And we will wrap up with Wayne. Hey, Coach, good to see you. I heard you said that you got some family time, but uh, I'm just curious, uh, with self-care, were you able to get in during the All-Star break? <laughs> Uh, got a little sleep, um, you know, we're able to do some of the uh, checklist items that I've neglected over the last six months uh, at home. <laughs> so that's part of the self-care, believe it or not, when you're married. Um, but no, nothing special. It was just good to kind of, you know, wake up and do what you please. And whether it's, you know, drop off and pick up at school, uh, you know, date night here and there. So it, it was good. Very relaxing. <laughs> That's good. And lastly, Coach, with that win in Brooklyn and then looking forward to these last 24, what about this roster excites you um, just going down the stretch? Well, I think just that. I mean, we have 24 games and, and you never look past uh, the game in front of you. But, uh, you know, to see where we were, where we are, um, and, you know, you still have not yet put this group completely together. So you, there's that anticipation of we've, we've had good moments. You know, we've played, you know, pretty good ball, you know, and can we sustain and continue to grow on that um, with also knowing there's another big piece, you know, that, that will hopefully soon be available. So that all of that's exciting, you know, and to see where we finish is, is uh, one of those things that we kind of, I feel like we can control our own destiny. You know, we're not going to look past anybody, but, you know, we have a stretch of games where if we do what we're supposed to do, we'll give ourselves a chance to uh, be in the mix.